Well, we're heading into the weekend and what a week it's been. It's actually been quite a month, a quarter, eight months. It's been a year, uh, two years. It's a tough time to be a white male conservative in the USA, let alone a police officer or a retired one at that. Between big tech, mainstream media, academia, and now the actual US government, conservative voices and viewpoints are not only taken offensively, they may soon be labeled acts of terrorism. Well, I firmly believe that knowledge is power and I refuse to give up one of my greatest assets. My promise is that Drew Breezy Uncuffed will never make you dumber, no matter where you stand on an issue. Your opinion is always welcome, and so is the discussion. The following are my top five documentary recommendations to help form a big picture of how we got here. I promise that they're not all political in nature, and they're not just for conservatives. In fact, these are just as thought-provoking for the other side of the chasm and may stimulate some of the much needed conversations versus the shouting matches with our fingers and our ears that we seem to adore so much. You might have to spend a buck or two to watch these, but I guarantee that your money won't be wasted. Besides, you can use the money that you're saving by not buying books. So let's kick it off with number five. It's titled, No Safe Spaces. First, let's cover academia in America. Comedian Adam Carolla, one of my idols, and the highly intelligent Dennis Prager, another one of my idols, tackled the indoctrination and misguided free versus hate speech theory at our nation's colleges and universities. The hook for me was the fact that as they were filming this documentary about censorship on college campuses and the attacks on true critical thinking, they were literally being censored on college campuses and attacked for their critical thinking Total irony. This movie cites several eye-opening examples of cancel culture on college campuses, and mainly how the left has turned on their own in most cases. The interviews of the liberal college professors sharing their stories helps paint a picture of what modern academia is producing and promoting. Want to know what you're paying for when you send your kid to college? Well, here you go. Number four, the plot against the president. To gather the big picture, let's look at how we got here politically. Look, if you're anti-Trump, I get it. I may not agree with you, but I get it. He's not everyone's cup of tea. But if you ever wonder what people on the right see that you're not seeing, watch this documentary, which was formed, by the way, from the book of the same name. No matter who you are or where you stand, None of the assertions in this movie have ever been challenged. And you'll probably be hearing certain things for the first time because they're not covered widely. Here's another breezy promise. This is not a conspiracy theory movie. Although lately the difference between a conspiracy theory and the scandalous truth has been roughly six months. Number three, a documentary called The Social Dilemma. This is a great movie to show you how social media and big tech are shaping your minds more and more every time you pick up your phone or open your favorite social media or productivity app. The unique thing about this is that the entire documentary includes interviews with big tech executives and innovators who not only developed the tools, they got out when their intended purposes began to stray. I caution you, this movie will play on one of your biggest guilty pleasures, but at least it will explain how and why you became so obsessed. Number two, hoaxed. From a big picture standpoint, the high amount of division in this country is due to the profit-driven narratives of mainstream media companies, rather than just telling news stories like they used to. The term fake news has unfortunately been watered down because its original purpose was to point out actual fake news. When the mainstream media was called out on their ethics, they worked twice as hard to make you think that you were a conspiracy theorist for subscribing to the fake news mantra. Journalist Mike Cernovich does an amazing job at breaking down the good old fashioned who, what, when, where, why, and how of modern media. Once again, this is from an insider's perspective. No one has challenged these assertions either. Mainstream media is profiting from creating division and this shatters any notion that it's a conspiracy theory. It's a great movie. And coming in at number one, what I feel is most important, 
especially for the law enforcement set. What killed Michael Brown? If you've followed me for any measure of time, you know what a fan I am of this movie. This isn't the typical pro-cop, anti-BLM rhetoric. It's a well-painted, skillfully drawn picture by writer Shelby Steele, a civil rights activist from the 60s himself, who holds that systemic racism isn't a true notion, rather a bold strategy to play on white guilt. This movie tackles the misinformation and race hustling that takes place after a white officer is involved in the shooting or in custody death of a black man. It provides perspective from the black community, and it feeds your brain about the social issues surrounding the Mike Brown case, including excerpts from the Department of Justice reports, eyewitness accounts, community leaders who are affecting change in the communities of black America in Ferguson and way beyond. One of the brightest spots in the film is an interview with a reformed Chicago area drug kingpin and Pastor Corey Brooks, who is doing amazing things to curb violence in the black community in Chicago. I can't recommend this movie enough. It's worth every penny and I feel somewhat validated after watching it, to be honest. So those are my top five to cover the spectrum of how we got here. I hope you enjoy them, and as a sneak preview, stay on the lookout for my own multi-part documentary about what formed me into me. Stay tuned for that. I'm Drew Breezy, and I'm entitled to my opinion.